bronchopleural fistula, thoracic masterclass, in this lecture the pathology, the clinical condition, and management of bronchopleural fistula is revisited. Bronchopleural fistula, is a fistulous tract between the main stem, lobar, or segmental bronchus, and the pleural space, the mortality ranges between 18% and 67%, two-third of cases are usually post-operative, and one-third of cases are due to non-operative cause. Bronchopleural fistula, can be classified according to, its site, its timing, underlying pathology, the size of the fistula, Accordingly bronchopleural fistula can be central or peripheral, it may occur early within 30 days post-operative, or late after 30 days post-operative, the pathology may follow a surgical intervention, which is the most common, or non-operative following different lung disease, it may be small, or large. Post-operative bronchopleural fistula, is the most common form, and follows pneumonectomine up to 9%, only picked me up 0.5%. More often after right pneumonectomy, and right lower lobectomy. Predisposing factors, this could be general, anatomical, technical, post-operative, among the general causes, old age, anemia, diabetes mellitus, malnutrition and low albumin, intake of steroids, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, fever, and infection or among the common causes, anatomical causes include, right side more than the left side, due to single bronchial artery, large bronchial stump, more than 25 mm. Technical errors include, extensive nova dissection, or dissection around the peribronchial tissue, tight sutures, and residual tumors, post-operative infection, along with ventilation, trauma via bronchoscope can predispose to bronchopleural fistula. Non-operative bronchopleural fistula can follows, infections which includes, tuberculosis, lung abscess, empyema, pneumonias, necrotizing lung disease, trauma, whether penetrating, blonde, or during rough bronchoscopies, malignancies, this can be from the lung, esophagus, thyroid, and lymphomas. Presentation, post-pneumonectomy, in such cases, sudden appearance of shortness of breath, hypertension, subcutaneous emphysema, cough, with expectoration of purulent fluid, and a reduction or disappearance of pleural effusion on the chest radiograph. Persistent air leak if early post-operative, post-lobectomy, if the chest tube is still in place, a large persistent, or new air leak may be the only sign present, fever, pneumothorax, chest pain, purulent expectoration, and cough, complication of underlying lung disease, or trauma may present with, pneumothorax, or tension pneumothorax, and persistent air leak after chest tube placement. Investigations these are directed to confirm the presence of bronchopleural fistula, and to localize the bronchopleural fistula, diagnosis can be achieved through, a chest X-ray, CT scan, and virtual bronchoscopy, fiber optic bronchoscopies, localization can be achieved through CT scan and virtual bronchoscopy, fiber optic bronchoscopy, utilizing installation of water-soluble contrast, while performing CT scan and sequential images are taken, selective balloon occlusion, installation of methylene blue through the chest tube, oxygen installation at the flow rate of 2 to 4 L while watching air leak, or direct vision of the fistula. Signs of bronchopleural fistula in chest X-ray, newly developed hydropneumothorax, changes in an already present air fluid levels, development of tension pneumothorax, drop in the air fluid levels exceeding 2 cm, surgical emphysema, and pneumomediastinum. CT scan offers direct vision of the site of bronchopleural fistula, at the sagittal, and coronal cuts as well as during virtual bronchoscopy reconstruction of the trachea bronchial tree. Fiber optic bronchoscopy can be both diagnostic, and therapeutic, it help in localization and confirmation of the presence of bronchopleural fistula, assist the size, exclude residual message, or granulation tissue, can visualize retain sutures. The initial management of bronchopleural fistula, is to address life-threatening conditions, like tension pneumothorax, respiratory failure, pulmonary flooding from fistulous cavity to the normal lung in such case the affected side should be dependent, drainage of air, and fluid this can be achieved through chest tube, treatment of infection utilizing targeted antibiotics according to culture and sensitivity, in this patient's nutritional status attention is paramount. The next step is bounded by several factors, assessment of medical condition of the patient, 
time of onset of the fistula, size, and localization of the fistula, the state of the pleural cavity, whether the patient is mechanically ventilated or not. So what options do we have here? Conservative management, revision surgery, plus muscle flaps, completion pneumonectomy, surgical debridement to control pleural infection, transpleural approach, transsternal, transpericardial approach, thoracoplasty, fiber optic bronchoscope approach. The algorithm of management of bronchopleural fistula with the empyema includes chest tube drainage and supportive measures. The next step is to determine whether the fistula is early or late, for early fistula is less than 14 days. The best approach is revision of the stump, the use of muscle flaps, via open, or video-assisted thoracoscope. Expected success rate of this approach is 95%. In cases that fails, open window thoracostomy is done. For those late bronchopleural fistula more than 14 days, these patients are usually frail and critically ill, hence, the initial management is tube thoracostomy, and targeted antibiotics. This approach by itself has shown a success of spontaneous fistulous closure, however should failure occur, re-evaluation of the size of the fistula is important in cases where the fistula is 8 mm, or the patient is unfit, bronchoscopic approach is utilized. In fistulas more than 8 mm, and the patient is fit, open window thoracostomy is utilized. The conservative management encompasses drainage, pleural irrigation, targeted antibiotics, and nutritional support, which myself has shown to help closing small fistulas, whether early or late, or in patients on mechanical ventilators. This approach can be supplemented by video assisted thoracoscope with pleural debridement to speed recovery bronchoscope closure in unfit patients, revision surgery, or completion pneumonectomy, plus, or minus muscle flaps, this is indicated in early postoperative stump failure, or due to lung pathologies, the residual stump is dissected and evaluated for its length, and viability, increases with short, or non-viable stump, completion pneumonectomy is done, reinforcement by muscle flaps using intercostal muscles, or if residual space, chest wall muscles are used, with or without the omentum. Open window thoracostomy, and Elosa technique, the classic removal of two to three rib segment, creation of a skin flap with preservation of muscles, muscle paralization of the cavity, with this procedure, epithelialized thoracostomy window is obtained and effective drainage is ensured, the wind is packed at least daily with doors moist with normal saline, granulation tissue in the wind begins to form over time and when the pleural space is clean closure of the window can be considered. Transternal transpericardial approach, this unique approach has been proposed in the presence of short stump, left-sided bronchopleural fistula, necrotic bronchial stump, and or history of prior bronchopleural fistula closure. The advantage here, is working in a healthy plane, the technique entails retraction of the SVC, the ascending aorta, division of the pulmonary artery, encircling the main bronchus, division and control of both ends. Thoracoplasty, the classic 11 rib resection, is not done anymore, hence tailored thoracoplasty is used instead. One of the major concerns in the treatment of bronchopleural fistula is obliteration of the persistent space after control of pleural infection, and to do this, fewer than 5 ribs are resected, and the residual cavity, is packed with muscle transposition, amentoplasty, and diaphragm flaps. At the end total space obliteration is achieved. Fiber optic bronchoscopic technique, this modality is indicated in early small fistula, or late feast days fiber optic bronchoscopic technique, this modality is indicated in early small fistula, or late fistula less than 8 mm, unfit patients to undergo surgical intervention, temporary to bridge for curative surgical intervention, patients on mechanical ventilators, fistula due to medical disease such as malignancy, infection, various methods has been proposed including several sealants such as fibrin glue, sclerosants such as ethanol, endobronchial valves, silicon and metallic stents, or the use of amplets a device, more details was previously given earlier in a previous lecture, persistent air leak.